I am Robbie English. I'm a real estate broker in Austin, Texas with Uncommon Realty. And I have the esteemed pleasure of working with an amazing crew and some amazing co-hosts. So today with me is Carrie Sitsima and Nelson Chang, both longtime residents of Austin, Texas, and both have actually lived on both sides of the river. And <laughs> just for those of you who don't really know, Lady Bird Lake is part of the Lower Colorado River Authority and the Lower Colorado River, which is the common dividing line between North and South. So we're going to kind of talk about which side is better. Um, if you've been in Austin for a while, you kind of know that this Lady Bird Lake or um, the Colorado River there is been called the cultural divide. And both North and South have kind of united but 35 years ago, back in 1987, there was even a face-off tug of war. So it was there that the Bubba's from the South and the Yuppies from the North duped it out with 140 people on each side of the river. Rules were simple. We're not going to be pulling anybody into the river today, but um, it was kind of interesting to kind of figure out which side of the river actually won. It was all in good fun, but the north side yuppies ended up in the water. <laughs> so Carrie Sasima is going to defend uh, the Bubba's from the south today. And Nelson is going to defend those quiche eating, wine drinking yuppies, what they called them back 35 years ago. So uh, we're going to get going. So Carrie and Nelson, glad y'all are with me. Or Thanks I'm with y'all. <laughs> Thanks for having us. Yeah, I'm glad to be here. So Carrie's going to kind of defend those Bubba's on the South. Nelson's going to jump in on the North and it's, we've all lived, all three of us have lived on the North or the South, right? Um, Nelson just moved to the North side. He's lived on the South since how long Nelson? It'll be probably 16 years. Yeah, 16 so. years. Yeah. Wow. Long time. I've seen it change. Yeah, I, which day. it has changed a lot. Yeah. yeah. That's good. I mean, it's a good thing that it is changed. Change is always good, but it's scary too. Yeah, right? it is. I moved to Austin back in 2004 and I moved to central Austin and it has changed a whole lot. I've lived north, I've lived south, I've lived north, I've lived south. Yeah. It's all been <laughs> great. But Carrie's got us both beat. Yeah. Yeah. Carrie has. Um, live just about a year in Austin, right? <laughs> right. Many, many decades here in Austin. Um, You're a, in the north and in the south. You're a lifer, aren't you? I'm a lifer. I was born here. I've been here my whole life. Man, yeah, they say, they you say have. All, true Austinites are a rare breed because there's so yeah. many people that move into Austin. We are. Yes. But you <laughs> know what I have to say? I love, um, I love all the people that have come to enjoy our city and you know, helped us to have, you know, different people from all over the country and from all over the world. It's really, um, really helped to add to what makes Austin an amazing place. Most definitely. Yeah. So, hey, so who's going to get going? Who's going to throw out the gauntlet and who's going to kind of jump in and win? <laughs> Who do you think? I, yeah. I don't know. It's it's kind of a tie. To tell you the truth, Austin in general is just one of the hottest cities in America right now. And so, Wherever you're at, you can be 30 miles outside of Austin. You're still considered in Austin. Right? Yeah. Um, so, yeah. So it so, doesn't matter if you're north or south. You're just in that's Austin. That's true. That's true. So, hey, Carrie, so if you're looking at some stats for South Austin, where mm -hmm. are we today? Do you know? So um, we're at a pretty low inventory right now in South Austin. Um, we're at just over a month of housing supply. A month? Really? Wow. Just just barely over a month. So housing supply is still at a historical low as it is in most parts of Austin. Um, South Austin has a little bit more inventory than North Austin, but it's just a few decimal points. Three few decimal points. Uh, why would you say it has more inventory in the South? What would you say the contributing factor to that would be? That's a really good question. It's you such a minor difference that I don't know you know that is you, really significant do you feel that a lot of the uh 
Southern Austinites are trying to move out, pack out, and move to the north, move to other that's, parts of Texas? That's possible. We also have a lot of new construction going in um, in the south of Austin. Mm -hmm. uh, places like Buda, Kyle, um, even the southernmost parts of the actual city of Austin have some more new construction. Yeah. So that may be a contributing factor to just that slight little bit more of inventory. That's true. Nelson, you and I both moved from south to north, so yeah. there's a big hole to fill just right there. <laughs> Got 66 go. percent right here. They moved to the north. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> I, uh, there is a. In the south, I mean, over there on the 45 and I-35, there's a lot of communities going up in that area right there off the 45. It's just straight shoot to the 130, gets you up to Tesla. And from there, you can keep going up to North Austin, get to Georgetown. It's just a straight commute. I find that to be geographically one of the better spots to be in the south. It's just yeah. local without traffic kind of means to get to where you need to be within limited time rather than spending an hour on traffic to I-35. Because yeah. we all know that I-35 can be one disaster. <laughs> it, it actually can. And Carrie, you said that was a little over a month of housing inventory? Mm -hmm. Yeah, and for our viewers and for the people that don't know, when she's talking about housing inventory being over a little bit of a month, that basically means that if no houses go on the market past today, that it will take a little over a month to sell the entire inventory. And just to lay a little perspective, seven plus months of housing inventory is a buyer's market. So we really are playing very critically in a seller's market still. And even to get up to that stable market, we're looking at four months of housing inventory. So we are a long way from even going to a stable. We are completely in and deadlocked in that seller's market. And I think that's true for the North, right? Yeah, it's just there. We're just under about a month supply of inventory um it's something every agent should know how to do and how to pull these statistics how would you say they uh they, the agent should be pulling these statistics robbie how do you think they should be yeah how should they be pulling it oh you want you want stats you want the, the i love stats thing? stats numbers well, are the thing you know we have some reporting that they can pull and jump in and um do some work on the market condition, but it's really understanding it. And a lot of people, agents out there don't even know that that report is there. And sometimes yeah. they'll wait for the um, realtor associations to put them out, usually a month trending behind. Uh -huh. But um, our agents at Uncommon know how to run those stats and be able to tell where the market is kind of going based upon its history so that we can jump in and properly advise a seller and a buyer. Yeah. Because, you know, those stats are are based on number of figures of, you know, whether the list price and the sales price, but, you know, it's, it's a pretty detailed information and we'd like to go through it with our clients and, you know, I don't want to tell every agent out there exactly. how to do it. If they don't know how to do it, you know, that, that's I, their own thing. I'm just trying to get to the point. If your agent doesn't know how to do that, you should come contact Uncommon because we all know how to do this. And that is something you need to be knowing at a given notice, not a month later, because... Oh. That can be an offer, that can be a home that you could move into, anything. And so it's great that we all know that and you are a broker and you're the ones who've taught us all this. So we thank you too, because without that, we wouldn't be able to know and how to discuss any of this to our clients. Well, our markets change on a dime sometimes, don't they? And they're not, it's not a, bro it's not a blanket. It's, wow. it's every property is, you know, in a little area, all jump in and be different things. Yes, but um, do we know, do we have a number on the North listings available? Well, as of right now, listings, they fluctuate, they can change, right? Yeah. Right. Moment. But as of right now, active listings are 418 and that is very low. <laughs> yeah, it is. It is because that's that gives a lot of power to those sellers out there to get no, what they want. I know we're getting multiple offers in this market and things are floating in. But, you know, that's a little bit of that housing market. What's the um, both sides of the river? Are we seeing about the same median days on the market? Are okay. we what are, what are we getting, Carrie, from you? So we're at 10 in South Austin over the last three months, 10 days yeah. on market for our median. Yeah. Wow. And Nelson, do you know for yeah. the North? just around nine, nine days on market? And well, that's scary. One day shorter. OK, yeah. so wow. we have one point, I guess, for the north, you know, <laughs> so that, that so is let's almost go out. <laughs> oh, depends yeah. on if you're buying or selling, really. <laughs> this is true. Yeah. yeah. You know, a happy seller market can 
be a little frustrating for a buyer. And, you know, you have to gear yourself up for a seller's market if you are a buyer and mm -hmm. just, you know, know that, sh you know, sure and steady, you can't give up and you've got to keep pushing and pushing and finding the right property. So, Carrie, what's a pro that you're going to throw out there at us for South? Choosing the South side versus the North side. Okay, so my my first pro is going to be something that really matters to me a lot, and that is uh, parks and outdoor space. Parks and outdoor space. Okay. Mm -hmm. So Any South Austin, Zilker Park is my absolute favorite. Without a doubt. Love some Zilker Park, and that is just south of the river. So yeah, South it Austin. Is. It, that park is just beautiful. I mean, it's a focal point in Austin, right? I mean, you can come to ACL, Absolutely. Come to you go to Zilker for pretty much everything, right? Everything. Don't you guys have like a, a beautiful Christmas arrangement that goes on there once a year too, right? The yeah. So there's Trail of Lights during the holiday season. Um, there's the Zilker holiday tree that you can go and see during the holiday season. Um, even not during the holidays, you've got the botanical garden. Uh, during the summer, you've got Barton Springs, which can't be beat. Um, for, the, for all those who don't know, it's 68 degrees year round, spring fed swimming pool. Um, and it's big enough that you can you can swim laps in it. Yeah. You can even scuba dive in it because some parts of it are, are deep enough to scuba dive. Yeah. So that is, you know. I don't think North Austin has anything that rivals Barton Springs. Correct me if I'm wrong. That, <laughs> no, well, Nelson? There, there's a lot, but nothing that'll compete to just the feel of Barton Springs. I mean, it's just to go there, it's it's a trip in itself from up here, at least for me. But it is something that you would look forward to. And I have a lot of funny stories that go on in Barton Springs. I've slipped off <laughs> moss. I've eaten it. I've belly flopped. That hurts. And they've got everything. They got jumping. They got. They tell you not to run, but hey, come on. They don't do anything when they when they see you. <laughs> so, <laughs> Rule like, breaker. <laughs> Rule um, breaker. There's also given times out of the year where it's free. You can get in. I know early uh, stages of spring they allow it that you can just walk in. It's free. But then during the summer it is a paid entry. But it's a worth uh, expense. You bring your own food. It's just chill there all day. It's it's a wonderful thing. And I don't think anything up north of Austin has that magnitude of a park right where zilker is connected to everything the barton springs you have trail of lights acl you know and then you have the other music festivals that take on and it's just a lot of fun just to be in that general area but the north does have a lot of parks you just have to go and venture out to them because they're not as well known as zilker is per se but there are a lot you got bushy creek that has this beautiful it's just man-made right and it's just beautiful to go walk and just run and get lost for a whole day day and a half but right. i don't think it competes to zilker in my opinion because i'm i'm biased on that <laughs> you're biased so Bushy creek is pretty nice though it is yeah, it there's is. a lot of trails out there mm -hmm. but they don't have music festivals down there that's for sure i i know i'm in the north right now but zilker right it does win in my heart and it always will <laughs> yeah i I kind of like that Great Hills um, Park. The Great Hills and, Park. Yeah, and what's that beautiful lookout up there? Come on, guys. There's a lot of Mount Bunnell. <laughs> yes, Mount Bunnell. Thank you, Carrie. Yeah, the South is really Mount Bunnell has some amazing views, and you know we kind of on the north side, Nelson. We got. Um, a big old lake over there that we've got access to, so mm -hmm. we can go eat some restaurants and look out off the beautiful side. But it really, park wise, mm -hmm. um, yeah, it's it's a south wind there. It's the south, it is, and it will be. It's just an icon known to Austin when people travel here. They they want to do the touristic things of Austin, and they're not going to go to Brushy Creek. They're going to go to Silker, right? So yeah. And Arboretum Shores and that mm -hmm. whole little, you know, area there. Awesome. So what's a what's a North Pro? Well, pro that most of these yuppies are coming to would be the domain. The domain is something I, you know, I'm still an indoor body right now. Now I'm married. I've got my wife. I'm settled down. But back in the day, I would love to go to the domain. The domain is one of the things I would look forward to do quite often. It's just they have everything you can do. You can shop. You can live. You have Amazon that's right around the corner. You have a lot of tech companies up there in the north. 
and especially in that domain area. But honestly, you just can't beat the atmosphere to be there on a Sunday, for example. Super Bowl Sunday is just going to be crowded and everyone's going to be. Yeah, you have downtown, but north, it would be the domain. It's just more I can actually hear a conversation with a friend of mine. Right. I don't have to scream at the top of my lungs. I can understand what they're saying and not compete with this, the speakers on the side. Yeah, there's a bunch of cool restaurants. Um, to go eat in the domain and you know uh, there's some cool little bars and pubs and you know clubs kind of coming in and you know that have pretty made it is it rock rose made it really kind of popular yes, definitely yes. and they even have a dog park that everybody all, a lot of my friends go to so mm-hmm. you know, I haven't been to the domain dog park but I've seen it and you know there's a bunch of cool things to to do in that domain area is there a con carry for that domain that you can think of I mean, it can be it can be crowded up there, but I mean, I I like the domain honestly. Like yeah. that's that's one of the reasons I'll travel to North Austin is to go and visit the domain. And Nelson, weren't you saying something about that? It's super cool to go there when the soccer team is playing. It is. It is one thing that Austin is united with is their own team of and um, the Austin FC football club. It's one thing that you can look forward to going since. The stadium is so close by to the domain. It's the one thing you can do and go see. Even though you're not at the stadium, you can partake in the atmosphere of being at a game, being at the domain. So many fans root for this team. And it's just something to behold. Just to go check it out and see it and be around it's actually quite fun. How about this traffic on those days? Is there a lot of traffic or, no, you know, with the so stadium much. right there? and you know, <laughs> Do what? Traffic is that. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, it's just Austin was not it was not future proofed and they're doing their best they can. And one thing that the North does have that the South and I've been there for a while is just, we can't up in the North. We have room to grow on streets and traffic wise. We can make roads wider. We can make FM roads wider. But in the South, I feel that it's a con down there because everything is so just it's a clusterfuck. And I hate saying that word, but it is you got to you got to time your day an hour in advance if you're trying to get on I-35. Um, so Nelson's, you see, Carrie Nelson's throwing us right into transportation, don't you? Right, you know, right. He, he's going to try and say how easy it is to move around in the north, which he may be right. It is. I don't yeah. know. You lived up here for a while, so you tell me. Is that one thing that is something that you kind of wish was in the south? I I do wish that we had some wider streets down here. Um, some of the streets up north are just like really nice and wide, especially in like kind of the tech corridor kind of area. And I'm kind of arguing for the other side right now, but um, some of the streets up there are are just far better built than the ones we have down here. And we're kind of in the process of improving some of the streets down here, but I feel like we're kind of a few years behind where we need to be. Yeah. But yeah, we do have lots of bike infrastructure. So, oh, you know, if you'd rather bike to work instead of drive on the, on the roads, then mm-hmm. that's a pro for the South. Yeah, that's true. Yeah, there's not a whole lot of room in the south corridor of Austin to really jump in and add a bunch of more width to some of those root, uh, yeah. roads. Mm-hmm. And right. that's one of those um, kind of issues that gets a little bit of frustration. Yeah. But we got that in north because, you know, there's it was probably thought out a little bit better. I've always heard of Austin being just called, you know, the small town that's being forced to, to get big. And in the South, you don't have the, even Central, there's not a lot of the infrastructure. Kind of 45th is just, you know, we've pushed it to its max. And if you're driving a full-size SUV, you've got brush hitting you and Mm -hmm. stuff like that. And I, living in the South, I I would go one main road across to, from Southeast to Southwest. And I have a friend from the North meet me for lunch or dinner and, they could get all the way back up to Palmer before that I could even get across South Austin. Yeah. So that was a frustrating. So, you know, it's frustrating because most of the time you spend a third of your life driving practically in traffic, right? Or it could be a third. And especially us real estate agents where we're driving constantly, that can be problematic and stressful, not good for our health, right? So I would say the North has a South beat on that part only because I just love how wide the roads are. <laughs> And yeah, I mean, I will tell you the cops here are a little bit more stricter than down south. That's you gotta be careful with your speed limit. 
<laughs> if you're driving 90 on FM 1431, it's like six o'clock. <laughs> no, it's a no problem. Yeah, definitely. Living in South Austin, have you learned some kind of move, kind of ways to kind of get around the traffic, Carrie? Yeah, there are definitely a lot of options to get around the traffic, um, especially if you're familiar with the area, but also um, Google Maps is pretty good at like navigating you through back streets, like around any backups. So, I mean, that is another another pro that we have going for us. There are lots of different ways to get places because there are a lot of a lot of smaller roads that you can kind of veer off on and get to where you need to go. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I mean, South Austin's got that, you know, weird. That's where the whole keep Austin weird factor came from was 78745 and that whole South Austin feel. But um, have you found that in South Austin, 130, the new 130, that's kind of way over to the east do you think that that has helped with any traffic in south austin it absolutely has i know it's taken some of the strain off of i-35 um and it it makes it a pretty easy jump from south austin up to like say tesla or even round rock pflugerville um, i've even taken 130 when i'm traveling towards the waco area and gotten there a lot more quickly than you know, when I used to use I-35. So 130 is definitely a huge, huge convenience. Yeah, I take it to, I take it south to San Antonio too, because 35 yeah. sometimes is a nightmare. Yeah. And I always is a nightmare. And go. Yeah. There, this is both north and south, but now at the completion of the toll, 183 is done. It is a way to get around downtown traffic from I-35. Just hop on to 290 going towards the airport, jump on to 183, hit that north. And the beauty that I love about this 183 toll is there is no speed limit on this toll whatsoever. I was driving by a cop, and I don't encourage this, please. Uh -huh. Not by any means. Don't do it. But the cop was next to me. The, I was going 85, and I just look at the cop as if, is this okay? And he just shrugs his shoulders. There's no, he can't pull me over. There's no speed limit sign. And I don't know if that's a thing that they're trying to keep up going for a while, but there are no yeah. speed limit signs on the 183 toll. Is that going to be the Texabon? I, I hope so. <laughs> Do a giant yeah. loop around Austin. That'll be awesome. <laughs> yeah. Got all those Teslas just driving by 0 to 60 in 3.4 seconds. Yikes. That'll the be. Teslas, the Porsche dealership, I think, yeah. located in the wrong place then because yeah. it should have been up there on the no, no, no speed limit sign section. But I, um, I believe they're opening a new one in the South, correct? On I 35, carry A new Porsche? They are. Uh, um, they are, right? Yeah. Are so, they? Yeah, I've um, never seen the one up north off of um, 316, 183, 183 yeah. that just went yeah. in. Mm -hmm. Well, the, the one south isn't as big, but it's right by the... Oh, so here's a positive. Carrie in the south, they got the Ferrari dealership, too. They do. Right there. Right there they the Ferrari dealership. We also have the car vending machine down here. Carva? Yeah. yeah. That's what Carva? Carvana. Yeah. Yeah. Carvana. Yeah. Yeah. That's mm -hmm. right. Right there yeah. off I thirty five. We actually have the whole motor mile. So if you are shopping for a vehicle, mm -hmm. this is going to be the place to go. Yeah, that's true. Yeah. Inventory just like houses. Cars are 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 low as well, right? <laughs> but <laughs> I yeah. prefer a house over a car. If that <laughs> something, especially through this pandemic, everything can be done virtually practically now, right? I need a place to live. I can't stream this from my from my car. I was, right. I was, I had a Tesla, maybe, but <laughs> we're not there yet. <laughs> well, Aston Martin is up north, but BMW have uh, dealerships both um, north and south. So that mm -hmm. makes it a little bit easier if you're mm -hmm. a little yuppie in a BMW kind of yeah. thing. And But there's a bunch of different dealerships, whether it's north or south. Yeah. Um, what about um, shopping? Let's get into my favorite cardio here. Let's talk about shopping. Who's got better mm -hmm. shopping? I know we talked about the domain north. But, you know, we got, you know, we also have the Round Rock has an outlet shopping and so does San Marcos. Mm -hmm. San Marcos, is a yeah, city. San Marcos has a massive outlet mall and that's yeah. maybe 15 to 20 minutes from mm -hmm. South Austin, yeah. depending on time of day. Time of day. Okay. Yeah. yeah. You're going to have to give me time of day there because sometimes <laughs> it takes 15 minutes to get to Kyle, but I do love me some San Marcos. Yes. Yeah. I do nice. love, I've got a Gumby's pizza in San Marcos and a bunch of cool things to do. And, you know, San Marcos is, 
got a lot of benefits. So even access to the southern region is a, a pro for South Austin, mm -hmm. right? Right. I, I know I'm not in part of the South, but I've been there, but there are a lot more mom and pop shops down in the South than there are in the North. And that's something that I like to keep business local, you know, being self-employed and stuff like that. I prefer the local business rather than going to these corporations where they treat possibly their employees incorrectly or their customers differently. Uh, and I know that for a fact, the South has more of those mom and pop shops just virtually anywhere, right? Whereas the North, it's more of the That's bigger true. names. We have, just for example, like Ikea's up here, right? Uh, that's something that's not a mom and pop shop. I prefer to go local if I could for those kind of things. So yeah, for the local yeah. business is what all Keep Austin Weird is about, right? right? And for shopping local, you really can't beat, we have the South Congress shopping corridor down here. We've got mm -hmm. South First Street and South Lamar, those are three major corridors for locally owned businesses, local artists, local restaurants, entertainment too. Yeah, in SoCo, there's some amazing restaurants and shopping. Yeah, yeah that, that's like a plus two or three for South there, buddy. Yeah. <laughs> it, it, oh no, definitely without that. That's just, I totally agree with that. I mean, shopping I mean, is different. The shopping is awesome and there are some really cool restaurants and how you can park. And, you know, if you've never um, parked in that area, we've got some, isn't it still back in parking? It's yeah. still back in parking. Yeah. That, that's smart. I mean, and you, yeah. So parking. it makes it easier to get out, but you can get out of your car and you can walk up and down the streets and stop at the shops and the restaurants and you could spend a good day down there. Mm hmm. You can and, walk yeah. straight to downtown from there too, as well. It's not too far. It's a good little trip. Yeah, it's yeah. Nice. It's good to see a little blood sucking happening, or you yeah. know, something similar bats. to that. The yeah. bats of Austin are also mm -hmm. South Austin. We just, have some north. Yeah, we do. Yeah, there's a lot. And just as a word of advice, be careful parking on that street and coming out because there are bicyclists that run down that lane where the parking lane, uh, the parking aisle is. And I have seen very bad accidents because it's downhill or uphill. The downhill is where the accidents occur most of the time, but just keep a, keep an eye out on them. I only say that because I do bike a lot myself and I have seen some pretty scary accidents on that road. We don't need a pancake. No, <laughs> no, for, for no, sure. no, pancake me. <laughs> no um, I do would have to agree that the shopping down South is, has it beat more corporations up here in the North. There are mom and pop shops, don't get me wrong, but there are way more down South. And just a lot more, um, I mean, I can just go down straight SoCo, like you were saying, and visit a lot of things. And I know Uncommon Objects used to be on South Congress, but they moved, but it's still south of the river. And they so are, south, yeah. yeah, they're still in the south. And that's a cool place to go and see all the, just the oddities that are in that shop are just, they're fun to watch and just take a day there as well. Well, we've got some oddities in our brokerage, let me tell you that. Uh, <laughs> uh, what bars and restaurants, which side do you like better, north or south? Which has got a better uh, local Austin flavor? Is it south or is it north? I Personally, I'd probably say it's down the middle, correct? To me, I feel like it would be down the middle. But then again, I also am not going out as often as I used to. <laughs> I mean, we, we got the broken spoke. You do have the broken spoke. Well. Mm-hmm. We got the Continental Club on South Congress. Yeah. Um, the the feel yeah. of Austin is more in the South, especially for the nightlife. I like the drinking, having fun, going out and seeing the breweries. You have a lot of them. True. Local to Austin, you know, inside there's uh, Austin Winery. You have in Dripping Springs, just the myriad of distilleries and breweries. Breweries and wineries. Uh, yeah, it's, it's a good way to be out there, have the day out there towards the south, just take that trip in hill country and you can see quite a lot. <laughs> just make yeah. sure you drink responsibly. Lamar has yes. some good restaurants too, and mm -hmm. um, all in that south region. What's your favorite South Austin restaurant? Dun, 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 dun. For breakfast. Okay. Bolden Creek Cafe on South First Street. No, yes. oh, that sounds good. Are they do they have vegan options? They have vegan. They're a vegan and vegetarian restaurant. Um, however, omnivores love it too. Like I always take all of my omnivore family and friends there when they come into town, and no one has ever complained that it's vegan and vegetarian. No, their food's amazing. Nelson, what's your favorite South Austin restaurant there? 
my south Austin. They're in the north too, but since more of them are in the south, I would say a place to eat would be ramen tatsu. It's a uh, Japanese ramen place that I like going to. It's one of my uh, favorite, and it's this south. Uh, since well, it's north and south, but there's more south now than there are north. And it is it's a good place to go to. It's a small hole in the wall kind of where it started as that, and you kind of eat at your own. Five things on the menu. You eat, take your time eating. It's a shared table. Um, during the pandemic, they closed, right? Because it's so close, Japanese style seating where everyone shares the table. Uh, you keep to yourself or you talk to your neighbors. And I found it to be really fun to be able to talk to a complete stranger and get to know them very easily. And yeah. Yeah. Well, that's not really breakfast. Do you have a breakfast fave? Oh, a breakfast fave. <laughs> I'm an odd one and I don't really eat breakfast. Uh, my first meal of the day is at 1 p.m. in the afternoon. Oh, okay. Intermittent fasting. So, yeah. That's oh, okay. I've been doing for a while. Uh, Magnolia. Does anybody go to Magnolia? That's one. Oh of my yeah, Magnolia. Those, yeah. those, <laughs> those late night. Uh, those late night dining. <laughs> yeah. Oh, late night dining. <laughs> yeah, late night dining. I guess you can count that as breakfast, right? <laughs> and you know what? If we want to talk about breakfast, let's talk about breakfast tacos. Oh yeah, there's a lot. So of Austin is arguably the breakfast taco capital of the world, and breakfast tacos you can find them on literally every corner in South taco Austin. Taco truck. Yes. Good yes. taco trucks. And we have barbecue uh, breakfast tacos too. Mm -hmm. You know, yeah, we've got a bunch of different options. Br brisket breakfast tacos mm -hmm. are a thing here. Yeah. yeah. Down south has one of the other good barbecues, La Valentina, down there on Manchac. I believe they have some great barbecue down there and some tacos. It's uh, quite good, I hear. I was, I never have tried it, but I know that my friends who eat and prefer barbecue, that they like going there. It's, Sweet. I mean, Salt Lake is in the South, but they That's prefer true. La Valentina. Yeah, Salt Lake is another one. What about yeah. Mexican food? That's <sighs> a rancho. Yeah. <laughs> Is no <laughs> Another one I love is uh, Maudie's. I'll go to Maudie's before mm -hmm. I will go to Chewy's any freaking mm -hmm. day. Yeah. Down south. What about north? The north, I have not ventured to the Mexican area, but I know there are some good dineries. I have tried a local Italian restaurant that is very good. Um, and I honestly, I probably was eating there when I first moved up here once a week. <laughs> So that pasta got kind of heavy. I was like, we need to take a stop on this because it is pasta every night for once a week uh, when we just moved up here. But yeah, they are, I love their food over here. And there's some great restaurants here as well, but I would prefer to eat inside. You know, I'm, I have a health condition, so I try to keep as healthy as possible when it comes to eating when I can. And it's just better for me to stay indoors and eat as much as I can. But there are some great options up here, just as there are in the South. Yeah, I think both North and South share the love of Kirby Lane mm -hmm. and the pancakes nice. and some of the things that they have. And they've got a big uh, operation North and it's some really cool ones South and one on campus. So um, there's some cool, you know, options for both North and South. But since I just said campus, both sides of the river have acreage for education, right? Higher education. You know, one yes. of them we can all think off the top of our head really easy. Burnt Orange, U University of Texas. But South has a big one, too. I mean, there's other universities, too. But we've got two main ones here. What's the second main one, Carrie? We've got, we've got St. Edward's University. Mm -hmm. You like St. Edward's for some reason. I do. I love St. Edward's. You're an alum, correct? I'm a St. Edward's alum, yes. It's a beautiful campus. campus. That's, it is it is a nice campus yeah it is a beautiful Dude. campus both of yeah. them are amazing and they bring yeah. a youth to our city that is just amazing and yeah. i know some people get tired of the kiddos and you know everything i know we that kind of does but hey it keeps you know downtown hopping on the weekends i'll tell you that oh definitely i mean both i mean if you think ut it's not really north of the river or south of the river that's just an austin thing and i feel that it's if you come to austin that's one thing you have to go check out but i would recommend too to go check out st edwards i mean the campus is just beautiful the whole school is beautiful and you can see that distinctive red tile 
from 290 or i-35 oh. you can't miss it it's just so beautiful right. yeah it's just it's it's really nice to go check out the day there especially walk around on the campus carrie yeah. what was it like to be a uh saint ed's student and live in did you live close to the campus or i did i lived um i lived in the barton hills neighborhood when i went to school there uh -huh. um, so I lived pretty close by, um, commuted, you know, just those few miles over to the campus, but it was just, just a wonderful experience. Great community at St. Edwards, beautiful campus, um, it's world-class learning. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. It's definitely. But since we're on education, and I think this is one thing that is, we can go talk a lot about education, but where would you say, we have to be careful with our wording here, but a sought off independent school district would be, would it be South or would it be North? Ooh. Hmm. Ooh. Education is subjective to everyone, right? We can have our own. It is, it is. I'm gonna, I'm gonna do the safe and say Leander. <laughs> <laughs> How about that? Um, Indians is, is very popular. I mean, I think it depends on what age your, your children are, but hey, I'm, I'm not one with kids, but you know, the, each, it seems like, Ele it's the two things that my clients like to look for is either a strong elementary or a strong high school. Mm -hmm. And there's something in there with those two and middle school, I guess, kind of just falls or junior high kind of falls in the middle. But what about y'all? I mean, I didn't grow up here as a small child or even high school. Mm -hmm. And, you know, I know they've got some amazing campuses and, you know, a lot of pride for their schools. Um, Carrie, is there a, a one that you had a, a memory of because you went to private school right yes i went to st michael's which is over on the west side of austin so do you know of one public school that was predominant you know back in the day that you know was like the cool place to go you know we we knew a lot of other kids from west lake high yeah yeah because they were kind of in our same part of town and i think our teams played each other and you know, they were always, always really cool people to hang out with. Yeah. I only asked this and I only asked that because this is something I just recently found out is that school in Texas, you do not have to be in the ISD to have your child go to the ISD. There is a program where you can test the child and if there's enough room in the school, they can let the kid in. Now, cool. I... Like Robbie was saying, if I ever had a kid, I would want my education, the foundation, just like a home, you know, the foundation needs to be strong to support the house. My education right. for my child is the elementary school. That's where their brain is the sponge. If I can get them into a great school to learn, and it, it falls upon me as a, as a parent to guide my child in the right way, correct? In my way, the way I would see would be best for society. But if I wanted to take them to another school out of my ISD, as long as there is room within that school, you can have them tested to make sure that they're able to get in. And if there is room and they pass the test, they can go to the school. You can drive 45 minutes to an hour to drop them off beforehand, and they'll be able to go to, you know, Aikens High or whatever they want. So if it's a choice that they're not in it, they can test for it. And this I just found out recently about a couple months ago while I was talking to a friend. Well, and that's pretty like, cool. Yeah, I was like, did you guys move to the school district? And they're like, no, we're still in the same spot. But uh, he tested and he passed and they had room. And so they let him in. We just have to make the accommodations to drop him off, you know, an hour in advance before going to work. So they don't mind it. And as long as he gets to go, uh, uh, the child is very gifted in performing arts. So they wanted to send him to a school that has good um, just performing arts in general, theater and things like that. And so they tested him to get into the school and he passed. And he was able to well, go cool. Yeah. So that's so little... you got some options there in yeah. Austin. So if yeah. you want to move them around, you got to just get a smart kid, you know, then I guess it's all blamed on the parents, you know, they don't pass <laughs> the test, then you just have to move. So, hey, how about that? <laughs> you know, so you may have to get a bigger job. So we've talked about education. We've talked about tacos. We've talked about roads, but we left one thing out that I think needs huge mention. And, you know, we talked about 183, not really having a speed limit. We talked about 130 being the, you know, 85, which is the fastest highway in the United States. But what if you want to go faster? What if you want to get to the 120s and the 140s? How, how 
where can you go to drive a Ferrari or a Porsche or whatever car is your favorite car you've owned, you know, at a huge fast speed? Anybody? You got Circuit of Americas. Yeah. Right there. You can go yep. as fast as possible there. You and can where be- is Circuit of Americas? That would be on the south side. <laughs> well, it would be on the south side, but what area? Like, you know, one it's over there. It's on, on the 130. And on the east side. Yeah. It is. We, in Elroy, right? Mm-hmm. A little area mm-hmm. um, on the south southeast side, really, of Austin. So you can get out there. And I do know that they have it for um, regular, everyday Joes to get out there and drive their cars. I mean, safety yeah, and stuff. Cool. Yeah, they have all sorts of events there. You can ride your bike. The autos on there too. Yeah, you can take your car. I believe you're able to go in, see, and ride around, drive around the uh, the course. And they also have a lot more events that go on throughout the year there as well. They have concerts. They have their Christmas show has taken a huge uh, 180 since they first started. It's now a complete different um, atmosphere than it used to be. Uh, the concerts there are always fun to go to. I believe the last big one, um, I can't even think off the top of my head who it was. Was it the Rolling Stones? The Rolling Stones, that's right. Yeah, yeah. and they were the last ones there. Um, they have a lot. I mean, even the X Games was held there for a while, correct? I mean, yeah. when they were here, so uh, oh, that's right. It's just you know, Austin has so much to uh, offer in the sense whether it's the north or the south, but. If you're going to talk about speed limits, Coda is the place to go. Coda is the place to go. Mm-hmm. So um, we've talked about restaurants. We've talked about parks. Is there some pro that one of you has for your side of town or even for the other that really would be something that a somebody moving here that doesn't know anything about Austin would want to know other than calling you and saying, hey, let's go look at some houses? What is one aspect of one of the sides south or north? You know, we've got almost a tiebreaker here between North and South. So I kind of need to know something that we haven't talked about. Well, Carrie, you want to go first on this one? You want to give something about the North? I give something about the South? Or do you want to keep it North and South? I'll tell you that South has a lot of really good um, suburbs. So we've got we've got Buda, we've got Kyle, um, we've got Maxwell, and then we've also got Dripping Springs. Um, but in Buda and Kyle, you can still get a new home right now in the 300s, which is unusual in this area. So there's a lot of opportunity there, you know, for people that are in that price range. You can look at Buda, you can look at Kyle, you can look at Maxwell and maybe find something really amazing. Are these yeah. uh, build on your lots or are they doing the the style of bidding that most builders are going for right now? Um, so the ones I've seen have been spec houses okay. that are being built. Yeah. Yeah. You pick and make some final selections and get some things done. And, you know, Maxwell's got some openings for the 200. I think it's 274 was the ones that I think Carrie, one of Carrie's clients, we were talking about it for them, mm-hmm. <laughs> but absolutely. But North, what about North Nelson? Is there, you know, I, one of the big, huge things for me is that's where all the tech companies seem to be yeah. moving, right? Yeah. The tech is, I mean, just thinking about it off the bat right now, you have Apple that's going to be done soon, and that's right there off Palmer. And it is one of the things that everyone in the U.S., it's either an Android or Apple, right? But I can tell you right now, Samsung is also here in the north. And uh, just the fact that tech in general is coming to the north means a lot for those who are looking to work here for these campuses, whether it's Apple, Samsung, whatever, you know, they have the options to work from home and live south or they can buy up north right it's just preference yeah go in. samsung's getting a second campus at Ta- in taylor so taylor. that's up north as well but we have facebook indeed and i know google mm-hmm. and there's two tech companies that are looking to come out into huddo area mm-hmm. and um i don't know if it was got signed or not but i think it's it's the huddo area which is over there off of 130 mm-hmm. so it's going to be really easy for to get either Anywhere. to Georgetown North or San Antonio South. Yeah. And of course, Tesla's in there too. Mm-hmm. The so, tech companies are, it's, they're all, the main big tech companies are here in the North and yeah. it's going to be that way. Um, whether they work for the campuses or not, 
they're going to prefer to stay local to the building, right? To where they work just out of, I have to go into the office today. I'd prefer to drive 10 minutes or five minutes rather than an hour from the South through I-35 or Mopac, whatever it has to take to get there. There is the conveniency of the Metro that runs from the North to downtown. And that is an option, but it is a 45 minute ride, whether you're all the way in Leander to get to Austin, or if you're going in one of the stops in between, and one of the cool things about that is, is it has Wi-Fi, so you can just jump on board and continue to start working while you're riding on the metro. So I you think can do that while you're work, driving. So yeah, I think if South had that, mm -hmm. it might be a real positive there, Carrie. Yeah. When are you going to get it down south? <laughs> you know, there's been talk of running a commuter rail line down into South Austin. I don't know that it's been officially approved yet. Right. Um, but I'm pretty sure it's in the long-term plan that Capital Metro has for transportation. Mm -hmm. um, so I'm, I'm really looking forward to seeing that being part of South Austin. Yeah, that's, it's a major. So neither one of you ended up with any black eyes today. <laughs> I mean, I figured there was going to be a wall of one or two kind of happening. I don't know. So, it's, it's, it, she's lived in the North and the South and I have been in the South and I'm on the North. So yeah. I think the consensus is just Austin is an amazing place to live whether you're on the north or the south and you get to whatever you want to get to definitely and they take planning yeah yeah it but is whether you are looking north or you're looking south call nelson chang and call S carrie sasima and get them out there looking for you the perfect home yeah just because finding your the right agent to help you out with your needs i mean you don't want to go to someone who education is just something they don't think it's worth it and they just get the bare minimum everyone here at uncommon has to strive for more education and that's something that we all look into very seriously here and we have an amazing broker who's robbie who he knows his stuff and has been doing this for a long time so if we have a hey let me get you back to you in a moment i'm gonna talk to my broker his knowledge is an experience will outseed any of my education right now and he's on my back he always has my back so yeah but you know it it's it's a team and we've got an amazing team, which really makes it work for us. And yeah, education is important and everybody strives for that. But, you know, it's knowing that market and having these longtime Austinites instead of people just moving in. Mm -hmm. And, you know, Carrie has been here for ever, you know, forever. forever. We're not even going to say her age because that's not very polite, but <laughs> you're, you're in good hands with either one of them. So, yeah. you know, give us a call if you need anything. We're happy to duke it out and talk about North versus South anytime. Yeah. Thanks now, for having we, us, Robbie. Hey, thanks for being a co-host and jumping in here, Nelson, because this is going to be a fun weekly thing. Every Tuesday, yeah. it's going to be fun. And I think we're going to enjoy it and come up with some different topics. If you have a topic that you are interested in, put it down in the notes. But be sure and subscribe and hit that notifications button so that you can be aware of when we come back on and we'll look forward to seeing you next time. Thanks. Yeah. Yeah. Have a good day. Great. Thanks everybody. Thanks for being here. Yeah. Bye-bye.